Welcome back to my channel. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. And on this episode of Trucking It, this is the 100th episode. So, uh, I would appreciate it if y'all would give this a thumbs up and share it as much as possible. But if you cannot do that, well, that's fine with me. On this episode, I'm going to be discussing the device on the screen behind me. Now, there's several different versions of them, and this is just one example. This is the LightX Drive Cam by Omnitrax. There are several other dual lens dash cams available, and I want to discuss those with you right now. This may save your bacon, but this may also screw your career. It's a double edged sword. It's already led to several harassment lawsuits, and it's already led to several massive, and I mean massive, insurance company settlements with these big ambulance chasers, one of which calls himself the Texas Hammer. Stay tuned for more details on that next. I'm Zach Bell and this is Trucking It. And this is my 100th episode. And I want to talk with you today about the use of drive cams and dash cams in general. Now there's two different types of dash cams. The first one is just a forward facing camera. Much like what you find in the Garmin Diesel Cam GPS or in the uh, some of the Falcon Eye cameras, which I've seen some of the owner operators using, and similar. The second type I'm, that's out there is the type like you see on the screen behind me. This is the LightX Drive Cam by Omnitrax. And this is one of the linked to one of the biggest ELD vendors in the country. And if you're thinking about maybe getting one of these for your truck, or if your company is mandating you to have one, there's a good reason why, and it's not just about safety. So, on this channel, I do talk a lot about safety. Last night's episode was covering an upcoming snowstorm, for example. Which, by the way, if you're coming down here to Texas, you need to get out of here by Tuesday night. Dead serious. Or you need to find a safe place by then, because Wednesday is going to be a nightmare. And Werner Enterprises lost a $90 million lawsuit by one of these ambulance chasers last year over them sending a rookie driver out into one of these storms. And yes, that happened here in Texas. So I want you to know that it is not safe for you to be sending rookie drivers out in snowstorms and that these drivers need to be informed before they go out. Drive cam equipped or not. Uh, second thing. If you are a more experienced guy who's run in snow, me, for example, uh, we know our limits. Uh, FedEx trusts our judgment, in my case. And if we have to shut down, we have to shut down. That is their policy. Uh, other carriers, I've noted, J noted JNR Shugel, uh, Newsbomb, CRST, and that's just to name a few of them. And McLeod out of Decatur, Illinois, another carrier I used to work for. Their policy is very similar to FedEx's, where they trust your judgment, and if they see weather coming, they're going to inform you, whether that be through your ELD, or by placing a phone call, or by doing something to tell you where you need to shut down. And that's to avoid having that thing activate because of an incident. These companies are out there trying to save their own bacon against mega lawsuits and worse. 
So, if your carrier has one of these, it is a double-edged sword. The driver facing portion can be used to violate privacy. The best carriers that I know of, including my own, actually use a physical sleeper curtain to separate the driver area from the sleeper area and keep the sleeper from getting caught on camera when the vehicle's in motion. That is very much appreciated because we may be talking about Fourth Amendment and or California privacy law violations have if your truck is not equipped with one of those. In addition to that, there's a lot of things that these carriers can do with the footage from the drive cam. Now in my case, I'm using it for two purposes. Number one, if I get involved in a near miss, and I have caught numerous drivers with things like radar detectors and cell phones and other distractions using my particular drive cam. They, one, of, one such incident occurred a few months ago in New Jersey where my truck automatically triggered the drive cam and the brakes because of the fact that a driver with a radar detector got in front of my truck and immediately brake check me. I was able to successfully avoid the incident, though it did throw my co-driver out of the bunk. And that was despite his use of, well, let's just say, a fairly good system to try and keep himself in. I. I've already learned what airline attendants do in that situation. They normally give a brace command or some, some sort of heads up. Now, that's my drive cam story. Uh, I want you to know that these drive cams are there for your carrier's cover your butt policies. They are not there necessarily for safety because the drive cam alone will never, ever replace a safety culture. Now, note those carriers I named off that have open door policies in regards to weather shutdown. That's just one thing that can add to true safety. Other true safety techniques include heating advisories from the National Weather Service, so if you got a high wind warning, for example, you need to know what kind of wind speeds are there so you can determine if you need to shut down. And by the way, a lot of people in Arizona, California, Nevada, and New Mexico are going through that, along with some people in West Texas right now. In the eastern parts of Texas, we're not supposed to get as strong of wind, but that remains to be seen today and tomorrow. They're talking winds 15, 20, to 25 with gusts up to 40. Most trucks can handle that as long as you're not bobtail or empty. If you're bobtail or empty you can handle gusts up to 35 and that's about it before you have to shut down. Uh, these drive cams are also being used at certain companies by a guy who watched them 24-7 and is paid to basically be a foyer. Now, this paid voyeur is supposed to be watching for like distracted driving violations and can trigger that camera at any time. Uh, that being said, that is a type of operation that might be in violation of the privacy laws and such. Even if they say otherwise. So, drivers, please don't let this violate your constitutional rights. If, yes, we have this big document here in the United States called the Constitution. You need to learn what your rights are and what you have to do as a driver in order to stay compliant with those rights. And do note that driving is a privilege, by the way. It's not a constitutional right just yet because the laws have not been passed to make it a right 
car ownership and truck ownership are not rights either. Those can be taken away for any number of reasons. So, that being said, if you're on the job and you've got one of these cameras, I wanted to explain the operation of it. A small sensor inside the camera itself detects G-forces. Now, G-forces are what hold you and I down on this earth, as well as what give you a sensation of what's going on around your vehicle and in your particular environment. A high level of G-forces can kill you. And if it's detecting a high level of G-forces, well, then a, that sensor will trigger, whether that be going over a hard bump, or being in a collision of some kind, or having your truck's automatic braking engage. When any of these occur, your camera will go off. It will show your dispatcher a video of what happened. It may be a rough road, which, by the way, that, that occurs quite often with us. Or it may be a distracted driver in front of you. Or it may be that you're on your mobile device and it's seeing that. If you are on your mobile device texting, just know that it takes your eyes off the road for five seconds and it's like doing this to your eyes. At least to one of them anyway. It means you're not paying attention. So, get yourself a headset like this one. Put your phone in a holder and if you have one of these cameras, prepare to cover your bacon. Or your behind, whichever word you want to use. Uh, if your motor carrier does not use this with the random voyeur or whatever, and instead has it just set to send an email alert like ours does, you want to make sure that it is in writing in your contract that your camera is only to be used in incidents not to fire you. This is part of the reason why we have a driver shortage. And another part is the low pay in this business which I will discuss in another episode. Because drivers used to make doctor salaries, now you're lucky if you're getting between forty and sixty thousand a year. And you're out on this road dealing with aggressive motorists and bad people all the time. So if you want to avoid trouble, you can stay away from a carrier that has drive cams. However, with more and more carriers adopting this technology, as well as more and more drivers getting dash cams of their own, I see the way forward as you learning to adapt and asking for things like pay increases if your fleet has these, these devices in your truck. Ask for sleeper curtains and ask for a truck with truly advanced safety tech if you're going to have this in here. That means don't just ask for any truck that you can get your hands on. Ask for a truck that's got the lane departure assist, the pre-collision warning systems, the autonomous emergency braking, and adaptive crews so that you're less likely to get a following distance violation that you're less likely to have your voyeurs watching you all the time and so you're less likely to have problems down the road. Now if you're not working for one of these carriers with these new trucks with the safety tech I just mentioned 
and instead are in an owner-operator role, you can get a device like the Garmin Diesel Cam to protect your butt. Now, I'll go ahead and pull that up on the screen in just a moment here. As I pull up a new browser tab here and grab my keyboard. And let's go to images. And that, my friend, is the kind of device you want if you're an owner op. This is an all in one device that combines a GPS with a dash cam. It'll simplify your life and help cover your behind should the unthinkable happen by one of these mega carriers in the truck stop parking lot or out on the road. And it's definitely a nice to have if you can afford it. Think of it as an investment, not a distraction or a huge expense. It may be 500 bucks, but it's 500 bucks that will save your bacon in the end. Now, if you're a driver who's got one of, one of the LiDAX cameras, there's also a couple of other functions that you need to be aware of. If you have an older truck, the drive cam does provide lane departure assist. So does diesel cam. It will sound an alarm of some kind if it sees you crossing the line on the road. That's fine with me because more drivers do need that tech. It's also got two, in the case of the drive cam, two push buttons on the front. The diesel cam uses a touch screen interface. And these can be used to activate the camera when it is not already recording due to whatever type of situation is going on ahead of you. So you can record your detention time. You can record a guard that's choosing to keep the gate closed just because you don't have a valid pickup number or you can use it to record a situation where let's say a customer that used to be open is now closed and that your carrier gave them the wrong address or whatever. And that applies to either model. So, let's just be careful out on the roads so that you don't activate the drive cam in the first place. Whether that be the uh, forward facing diesel cam or the LiDAX drive cam or anything similar. And if you do see or have a near miss, just know that you're probably going to be recorded on video these days. And that if your carrier has the LiDAX drive cam and not one of the other models that's just forward facing, that you do need to be aware that there are privacy implications and there are safety implications and that your fleet needs to understand the importance of safety culture in addition to having the technology. Because safety is a culture. And it is not just one thing that will save your butt all the time. Safety is a culture. Cameras can be used as tools to help that culture, but they can also be used to hurt you in the end. That's my opinion on this. I want to know your take. And I know that there's going to be a lot of feedback, both positive and negative, on this issue. So, 
if you're going to be running for a fleet that has a drive cam, I would like to have your feedback and if necessary we may be discussing legislation against them in a future episode or legislation for them because with a lot of these vehicles now getting AI in addition that kind of legislation might or might not be an answer to this issue and I'm starting to see more and more of these out on the roads. So if you're driving another vehicle, whether that be a personal vehicle or a truck without a camera, just know that you are being watched. And not just by the cops anymore. I'm Zach Bell, and until next time, let's keep the cameras turned off and let's make your best trip your next trip. Bye for now.